Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, Mishmash Monday. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, this weekend had a fantastic time at the woodworking show. Got to meet Abe Elias, the knife maker, and uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about with that. But um, what happened was I got there early. Abe let us in, uh, you know, let me in a little bit early so that I can get some filming of the place before the crowd started. But a couple hours later, the place was packed. But really a, a nice show, a lot of fun. It was great to meet Abe and see what's going on over there behind the scenes. So um, I have some footage here that I shot of the show. Now I know a lot of you aren't big on you know show footage or whatever. So if you uh, if you don't like that kind of stuff, just fast forward to 10 minutes because at 10 minute mark on this video, um, I uh, I restored a couple tools that I uh, gave to Abe as kind of thank you you know just a little tokens of my appreciation for uh, for letting me in there. So you can check that out at 10 minutes. Just fast forward to 10 minutes if you don't want to see the show footage. Uh, if you want to stick around and watch the show footage, let's get started. Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, and we're here at the uh, woodworking show here in uh, Secaucus, New Jersey. It just opened up, 10 o'clock. People are just coming in, and uh, I'm at uh, right in front of Abe's booth, Abe Elias, famous knife worker. And uh, but let's take a look around the shop before we get to Abe's booth. Oh, you were here yesterday. Yeah. Good news. Family members really like it. Paint them. Now, one time I used to be pretty heavy into woodworking, and I, you know, we all start off by going to these shows, and I got into making pens. And uh, as you might recognize, this is Arizona Silhouette, and they they're known for making a lot of pens and pen supplies and things like that. And the guy that I learned from was taking a seminar from Barry Gross. That's him right there. He was doing a seminar here. They had a lot of lathes set up there that they can uh, give you demonstrations and let you get hands on and give it a try. It was, and that's where I, I eventually got into woodworking and uh, bought my first lathe at uh, one of these shows. You might recognize Bob. That was Bob there from uh, Jacktown, and uh, he brought all his old tools, and, and he does really good at this show, even though his prices at this show were a little bit higher than they are at Jacktown, but uh, I'll tell you, a lot of people are really interested in his area, and he, he brought a lot of woodworking tools. Bob has a ton of stuff. This is uh, one of the seminars they were given. Now, one thing these shows are known for is being able to pick up some nice wood, you know, uh, unusual wood. A lot of, uh, you know, you can get your, your walnut and, and slabs of uh, wood here for projects. And, and a lot of times people come here specifically to pick up different types of wood because they are uh, at a discount price and they're all available here. And one of my favorite booths is the Nova booth because uh, my most expensive and most cherished tool is my Nova lathe. 
And uh, I loved being able to go over here and mess with the new Nova tools that they have coming out. And I'll be talking about that in a little while. Now these are the easy wood uh, chisels and, and turning tools. Easy wood tools, uh, boy, they really change turning for me and for a lot of people. Some of the best um, uh, turning tools that you can get and you know, they might be a little expensive but they really will up your game. Now this knife, this, this blew me away, this uh, Stanley knife. I don't know if it was done by CNC or something, but just look how nice this utility knife was done. It's just beautiful. Again, some of my favorite woods of uh, Purple Heart and Paduke. I love those two types of wood. I have a lot of it, and I like working with them and just the way they look when they're done. Now here's Abe's booth and you could see Abe has been, he was busy all weekend and, and they were doing really good at Lee Valley and uh, Abe, like I said, was giving nonstop uh, demonstrations and he was always talking to somebody and there he is right there, he's giving a little uh, demonstration to someone but uh, it was so great that he, you know, we got to talk for about a half an hour before the show started and he was showing me a lot of the tools and things like that that they were selling there at Lee Valley but they have all beautiful uh woodworking tools and, and other type tools and, and it's all top of the line. One thing that I found interesting is that they're getting and they have a whole new line of these miniature tools and uh, these are serious tools. They're real tools. They're, they are miniature in size but they're made from the exact uh, materials that you would make a big tool out of and you can see here this is a no joke it's no toy the people actually buy these to do modeling and to make uh, you know small intricate cuts and they will work exactly like the big tools only they're in a smaller scale and uh, you can see here I guess it's probably close to like one six scale or something it's really amazing They actually make modern planes and scrapers and things like that to the same specs as, uh, as they did from years ago. They had a New Jersey shop there that uh, was featuring some Rikon uh, stuff, which I was always found interesting. And uh, they had their nice bandsaw here and their dust collecting and a couple, couple of tools that are real popular and they sell a lot of during the show. Isn't that the truth? Now, here's the uh, Nova. This is the drill press that just drove me nuts. I want this so bad. It's $900, but it's beautiful. Look at this little feature here. Like, 
you know, uh, you hit this auto start, and, and the minute you pull down the, the quill, it starts to turn on its own. So if you're doing multiple cuts or things like that, and it's variable speed, one horsepower, it's got all kinds of uh, fail-safes. It's just a beautifully made, I have that Nova lathe, and it's my favorite. It's got laser, uh, you know, that you can get your whole... Um, pinpointed okay, next up and we have this uh nesting screwdriver that i'm going to uh i want to give to abe because uh abe is a big screwdriver fan and he's been collecting screwdrivers i know he don't have one of these a 50 year old nesting screwdriver but a couple uh issues we have to address you see the pitting we have some uh you know pitting on there we're gonna have to remove the pitting see the back of the cap here is you know has some dents in it otherwise you know it's just patina uh standard patina and the rest of the blades are pretty decent, but you know, we got pitting on each one. So they all have to be ground down and they all have to be cleaned up. You know, that's the problem when you, you know, uh, this blade here, again, a little bit of pitting. And the only blade that has damage is the real small one here. And this, you see that, that real small one, see that it's curved over. That's the only one we're going to have to repair. Other than that, we just got to do a quick cleanup and uh, let's get to it. Here's the before and after patina. Sometimes you forget when you're doing it but you can see how much that really adds to the look of the screwdriver. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the screwdriver looked like before we started. Okay well we finished this up. Uh, the only defect we found was a slight hairline crack over here and uh, that happens sometimes and you know when my skills get better I will learn to take and I will be able to fix stuff like that but right now uh, this is done we uh, took look at polish this out the back you know so that's all nice got rid of all the cracks and everything and uh, and I think and the tip of this we redid you know these tips they're very hard to do because of uh, again these were more novelties than they were uh, to be used every day, but uh, I always found these interesting still do today I think they're just uh, such a, tr a tremendous design obviously machinists made these and uh, You know or uh, now they're done on CNC, but back then a lot of this had to be done by hand and uh, Polished everything out got the knurling all nice and uh, the tips are all good. This is actually a usable tip and uh, it's it's a beautiful little screwdriver. I think Abe's going to love this one. Okay, next up we have this beautiful... It You know, a lot of them were Defiance, Stanley, uh, Utonian, cast, cast Iron. And uh, you don't see many of these up in Canada. So I'm going to, uh, to straighten this one up, clean it up, and let's see what we can do with it. Okay, now we're just about finished with this. Now the only thing left to do is we're going to coat the inside here with shellac. This is raw cast iron. Cast iron is, you know, will rust in a heartbeat. So we're going to coat this with shellac. Then we'll uh, put it together and then we'll give it a good final waxing and everything. And, uh, and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Now, as always, this one was a little bit rough to start off. It's especially where the back seams met. But uh, you know my favorite part. Remember what it looked like before. Okay, and we're calling this one done. Uh, I've done a couple of these before, and I have to tell you something. They are just just the most satisfying tool to do because it's cast iron. It's roughly cast at, from the factory. And when you t do it the way it should be done, this is the way the designer wanted it. Look at the back here. This is I'm always proud of the back because the seams never m match up. They, this one had a horrible back to begin with, but look at it now. It's just beautiful. The lines are beautiful. And you know I usually like to add color to some tools, but this has that pebbled finish in there, and it just it's just such a classic look. I mean, if you have a couple of them, then you you know I've done some in red and some in green, but you know uh, this is going to be Abe's first one, I think. And, and you know this is the way it should look made in USA and and the little uh the little holes the breathing holes and it's just a beautiful 
uh, utility. One of my favorites, uh, pretty unusual, hard to find these ones without the uh, any writing on them. And uh, I think you really like this. So we're ready. We're ready for Saturday. So like I said, we had a really good time at the show. And um, I'll show you exactly what I picked up. I picked up some really nice stuff for the shop. You know, I was good, but uh, I got a little carried away. I always do at the shows. There's such, you know, you can drop a lot of money. But uh, I think you're gonna, Wednesday I'll show you what I got. I hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Thanks very much for stopping by. Bye-bye.